welcome to this edition of the Talk of Simsbury. My name is Dominique Avery. Today's show is all about bicycles. Last November, we heard or read that Simsbury had received the Silver Level Bike Friendly Community designation, a national honor. All the bike people in town were thrilled, but I know lots of you had no idea what it meant and what went into that. Joining me to talk about the Silver Level and all the bike things going on in Simsbury are Diana Moody, who chaired the Silver Level, Sil Silver Level that's so hard to say, uh, committee, and who's also involved with Simsbury Free Bike and the pedestrian committee, and you do a lot of things. And the Simsbury Bicycle Advisory Bicycle, Committee, yep. That's also a mouthful. Yeah. And then yes. across from me, Debbie Thibodeau is here, and she is a member of the Simsbury Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee as well. And she's also the chair of Latimer Lane Safe Routes to School Committee. And then Laura Rosato is here, and she's a fourth grade teacher at Squadron Line School. And she's behind Squadron's bike, bike and walk to school events, uh, from what I understand. Um, getting the silver designation had a lot to do with the various things that have been going on in town. And Diana, maybe you can tell us a little bit what that meant and clue the public in. What did that mean to get that? It meant a lot. It meant a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of dedication to the people who worked on it. But I just want to mention a little bit what drives the bicycle-friendly communities. And most people don't know it's the League of American Cyclists. And they've actually been around since 1880, and they were started in uh, Newport, Rhode Island, as advocates for uh, highways and roads, even before the automobile or bicycle was invented. And now they've evolved into the largest bicycle advocacy group in the country, and now, <coughs> now they're stationed in Washington, D.C. And, so and those are the people who gave us the silver designation. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And so they're, they're, they're the drivers throughout the nation. And their goal is very simple, and that is to build, to help communities to build bicycle-friendly communities. Because they know that communities thrive, it creates more economic development, um, <clears throat> and they do it through advocacy and education, which is really what we've done. Deb um, <clears throat> and her crew has done it through the education, through schools. We do it through bicycle education, through uh, <clears throat> Uh, uh, different programs that we do. We do it at Sinsbury Free Bike, and we've done it as advocates through our Sinsbury Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, which, as you said, is a mouthful. Right. <laughs> um, and we've also, as a result, we've mentored other towns. So uh, we became a bronze-friendly bicycle community in 2010, and that was a really big deal. So um, we decided that 2012 we would try it again. We didn't quite make it. We, uh, what we did was they give you a feedback report. So <clears throat> we just followed our feedback report of the low hanging fruits, the things that we needed to do. And then we reapplied in 2014 and we got it. And it is a really huge deal because <clears throat> as I said, it really builds better communities. And how you do it is <clears throat> they base it on the five E's. And I won't make it complicated and bore you with all of the things, but it is important to know. And so the five E's are engineering, education, evaluation, evaluation, uh, planning, and enforcement. And, and those were really important too because everyone on our silver committee was in charge of one of those five E's. Of course, we helped each other, we helped support each other um, within our group, within our silver committee. But we also got it because um, the town became involved, our board of selectmen, the police department, our businesses, uh, our citizens. It was really a town effort and a group effort. So we couldn't have done it without all of those people. So the reason uh, Silver Level is good, is, uh, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate, is because the bike, the national bike community uh, gets informed about that and more people are interested in coming here to bike, or what does it mean? <clears throat> Correct. Uh, it does, what it does, it, it attracts more people to your community. It attracts tourism. It builds, it connects communities. It builds communities, which is exactly what we've done here. And as a result of our mentoring and helping other 
communities. Uh, West Hartford is now a bicycle-friendly community. Farmington is now a bicycle-friendly community. South Windsor is a bicycle-friendly uh, <clears throat> community. And now Canton wants to apply to be a bicycle-friendly community. And we also have an advantage because we have a lot of trails that are paved that people can actually ride on. And <clears throat> as I said, too, it really does uh, it, it really does help the economic environment. Well, so I'm, I'm co-chair of the Tourism Committee, and Steve Mitchell is on the Tourism <laughs> yes. Committee with me. Yes. So I've been hearing about the bikes and how important they are for a long time. And I mean, he's done an amazing job, and I think right. he originally was sort of behind this. But. And we know through the surveys that we've done every year, um, <clears throat> the people who ride bikes, uh, it's increasing. Um, <clears throat> and so we have Bicycle Month. Um, and this is our third year, so we'll be increasing all of our activities through Bicycle Month. Um, we will have a silver celebration this year, and we're really looking forward to that. The whole town is invited. But it is a lot of work, but I tell the other communities who ask us and who ask us for our help is that it really is worth it, but it really is a lot of work because you have to fulfill the criteria criteria within each of those E's. So and is if you one don't, of the, right, right. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt That's you, okay. but is one of those criteria bike safety at the school level? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So Yes. Uh, that's what I thought. All right, let me move on to okay. uh, to the two people who, who who know most about that in school. Laura, mm -hmm. um, you're um, you're behind the Safe Routes to School uh, at Squadron, Squadron Line. Line. Yes. Okay, so tell mm -hmm. us for those people who don't know what it is, tell us what that is and what sure. that involves. Um, well, it, you know, we're going to get into some specifics about Safe Routes to School, but um, within the actual schools, we have um, had the opportunity to bring in a bike. PE curriculum, um, which we're really pleased to say is now expanding. Um, the school, there is a trailer that the district now has, um, and that trailer is going to help a fleet of bikes travel from elementary school to elementary school uh, throughout the school years, um, rotating amongst the schools for PE curriculum. The uh, program is now going to be expanded to grades four, five, and six, so those students will all receive uh, bike safety education. So it's bike. It's um, not learning how to ride a bike. Presumably, they've learned that already, right? It's mm -hmm. bike safety, or right? Bike right. Maintenance, or just bike safety? Uh, bike safety, for the most part. Um, we at Squadron are, um, for the first time this spring, will be bringing in a bike and pedestrian safety assembly for our students. Um, students in town start to have the permission uh, to ride their bikes on their own to school starting in fourth grade. So it's important that those students know how to be safe, where they need to ride, what side of the road they need to ride on. So bringing in those types of assemblies in addition to the, the bike uh, curriculum allows the kids to learn that and information. Um, and, you know, the hope is to uh, not only celebrate these bike and walk to school days, as we're doing in the spring, but to also um, make it a habit that they do often. Um, we look to see that our bike racks have more bicycle, bicycles in it throughout the, the um, good weather. Um, Debbie, you've been involved at Latimer, and you're also on the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee. Yes. I can't say that. <laughs> uh, and you've been involved in all kinds of bike safety um, issues and measures. Uh, why don't you tell a little bit about what goes on at Latimer and, and sort of more generally what goes on at, in the committee? Okay. Um, when I think about education and uh, the efforts that, that have been going on in Simsbury, there's uh, the school PE curriculum, and then there's Safe Routes to School, and Safe Routes to School is actually a national program that started about 10 years ago, and it's a program to help schools improve conditions around the school so more kids can bike and walk to school. And part of that is thinking about the infrastructure, you know, are there sidewalks, are there safe physical routes for children to go, but also to come up with um, encouragement measures so that people think about biking to school is an option uh, instead of getting in their car and being dropped off, which is definitely very popular here in Simsbury. Um, incorporating bike education and pedestrian education, safety education in as part of the Safe Routes program. So it actually is quite complementary to the PE curriculum. And, and both of those programs are separate programs, but they actually sort of evolved at the same time. 
and Safe Roots started at Tooten Hill School. It was a parent that started it and um, I learned about it at Latimer. I thought it would fit very well with um, sort of our neighborhoods. We have a lot of neighborhoods that are collect connectable to our school by bike without you know road hazards etc. But I didn't see a lot of bikes on the racks and as a parent I would um, occasionally bike with my own child and, and sort of think about that, that issue. Why are people being dropped off instead of, you know, walking or biking to school? And uh, so actually the two programs are quite complementary but somewhat separate. And then a third piece of the educational effort with the Bike Ped Committee is thinking about how can we educate our community about bike safety. And that means motorists as well as bicyclists um, and even the pedestrian piece we, sh we all share the trail and how can we all coexist safely. So I mean I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had people complain to me about yes. the bicyclists yes. because they ride multiple abreast especially on the weekends um, right. driving around. Uh, so how, do you, how, how are you dealing with that? Right. Um, our message really is a message for the bicyclist and the motorist that we all need to share the road and we all need to follow the rules. So, um, you know, certainly there are many motorists that have issues with bike behavior. Well, we have issues with the way some bicyclists ride as well. And, you know, our job is to make sure that everyone knows really what's supposed to happen. So the fact is that a bicycle is considered a vehicle and they are, they actually have a right to be on the road, but they also have the responsibility to follow the, the laws of the road. And so, um, you know, that's really an important piece. And the more cyclists that follow the rules and don't irritate the motorists, you know, the more accepting motorists will be of bicyclists on the road. So kind of a two-way street. But certainly there are, you know, motorists that don't necessarily follow the behaviors that are appropriate in riding around bicyclists. So there should be three feet given to a cyclist when they're passed on the road. And that is a law as well. So when you pass a cyclist, you have to give them, you have to, pass, you have to move over three feet? Right. So cyclist presumably is on the right-hand side of the road, and you should give them three feet of space. Now sometimes that means that you may need to wait until it's safe to go around that Because cyclist. there's somebody coming the other exactly. way in one of our narrow exactly. roads. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know it's also important to keep in mind, and I don't think a lot of motorists understand, is that the safest place for a cyclist to ride on the road may not be the exact edge of the road. So there's a lot of debris that can be on the side of the road. We have storm drains everywhere in this town. Cyclists need to ride around them. So being right smack on the edge of the road is actually a fairly dangerous place to ride. And so they are going to be moved over to the left. Now how far left depends on the road. It depends on the circumstances. Um, now, how are you actually going about educating your motorists? How are you doing We that? are using opportunities like this. Right. One of the things that we did, actually, um, thank you, Steve Mitchell, who paid for signs to go all over town. We placed the uh, three-foot sign that it's the law to help people, to help remind people. And actually, when I came into the studio today, your cameraman mentioned it. He asked me if I found that sign. And I said, no, we tried to pull them up for the winter. So, you know, things that we know where people can see these, and education is key. And safety also is the key because we're, we're, we're really concerned about the safety of the cyclist and the safety of the motorist because that really comes first. And I think if everybody would think in those terms that we want people to be safe, we don't want anybody to get hurt. So I think the cyclist has to respect that and the motorist has to respect that. So um, isn't, uh, I think the people of Simsbury really need to be educated that the fact that, that we are a bike-friendly bike community means that so many people are coming here, spending money here, it's a tourism draw, and that we need to share the roads. And I think there are a lot of people who want to get someplace quickly and don't quite get the connection. So I think you've been doing a great job, but I think there's Thank more you. to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot more to do. There's always more to do. 
I want to go back to the safe routes to school because that that has actually fascinated me mm -hmm. because I I'm, I'm I'm of a generation I grew up in a city where we all walked to school yes and mm -hmm. and and I think it's sort of touching that you're working so hard to get kids to walk or bike to school yeah, and uh, describe how it works I mean if 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 people have been driving on a day. It's really quite cute. Describe how it works, either At one of you. At a bike to school event. Um, basically, what we've done at the three participating schools is celebrate national, um, there's a national walk to school day in October, and there's a national bike to school day in May each year. And so we host these huge events, and we encourage the whole school to participate, even if a child lives in a neighborhood where they could not possibly walk or bike to school because of road hazards right. or, or frankly just too far because our districts are really right. spread out. But we design events so that everyone can participate if they choose. And so um, what we've done with Latimer is we usually set up about 12 groups dispersed somewhat near the school. The closest groups will be walk groups. A little further out are going to be bike groups. We set up chaperones that are parents to wait at those group sites and then ride to school with the kids or bike to school with the kids. I'm sorry, walk to school with the kids. And so some of those kids are, are right there in that neighborhood and maybe they don't normally walk or bike because they don't have anyone to go with or their parents don't want them to go without an adult. But in this circumstance, they can. Um, sometimes these are the kids that live further out and they get dropped off to have that opportunity to walk or bike in with a group. And we are seeing participation levels that are you know, huge. We've had at Latimer, all of, all of our events have had at least 50% of the school participate. And we're talking about schools that have 10% who are designated walker bikers by their neighborhood. So the kids love it. And Squadron has had yeah. huge So huge tell me a little bit about this. Yes, we similar. have a lot of fun. Uh, very similar. But, yeah. e you know, each of the five elementary schools has its own unique challenges or landscaping or, um, you know, Latimer is one of the schools that has the benefit of the bike trail being nearby. Um, so we at Squadron don't, and we have uh, quite a spread out uh, population. Um, I was very fortunate to have the benefit of modeling from Tewton Hills and Latimer Lane uh, to help help us get rolling at Squadron Line. Um, so our event is very similar to what the other uh, schools have done. Um, we have at Squadron, we have a much larger population um, altogether, uh, K to six. And so we have also set up, um, we have three walk locations and we have um, five or six bike locations where we'll have parents and chaperones ride in or walk in with the groups. Um, you know, it was, um, of one of those things that we went with because we wanted to get involved as the other schools mm -hmm. had and um, I was really pleased with the um, with the excitement of it and you know a, a parent had commented to me well why haven't we done this before and mm -hmm. and that really made me feel good that we we got have gotten something going that will continue to grow um, you know, we have had uh, we had our first bike event back last May, and we had uh, uh, just under 200 uh, students participate, um, which is about a third of our population at Squadron. So for our very first event, that was quite mm -hmm. quite successful. Um, we ended up uh, nice. kind of very quickly throwing together a, a, an event in October to celebrate the walk to school, uh, kind of take it a little bit farther. And again, we had over 200 students participate. So for this coming May, I anticipate that our event will be even bigger and more successful. And, um, you know, we have the same challenges of children that are getting bussed in from um, Hartford area. We have children who are clearly too far to walk or bike, but um, people are finding ways to help their children participate. And it's really been great to see that. So we'll look forward to the growth that will continue yeah. with that. <clears throat> Congratulations to everybody who's working so hard on it. So we're starting to run out of time. Uh, May is National Bike Month. And um, I wanted to hear a little bit about what the plans are uh, for May in town. Well, there are a lot of plans. And um, we actually start off May 1st. Um, we launch it with a, uh, the Board of Selectmen ride. Uh, we did it last year. This is our third year. 
Um, so that's May 1st. Uh, since very free bike opens May 1st. So um, <clears throat> the Board of Selectmen ride, the first Selectmen ride, that's our really launch date. Um, <clears throat> throughout the rest of the month, we have uh, a lot of different. I'm going to have to kind of use my sure, picture here a little bit. Sure, please. Uh, so I won't forget. We also have group rides in, <clears throat> with, uh, with uh, bicycle groups. And this year we're doing um, Eastern Block. They're a bicycle group. And so that's the 4th, 5th, and 6th. We have another group of uh, Valley Cycling. We have um, a, new, uh, <clears throat> a new event this year, and it's called Cyclofem. And it's, and it's an initiative for women. We're launching that at, through the Bike Cellar. You'll see more about that uh, coming up. Um, our biggest event that really turned out to be very successful last year, we've, all, we've done Bike to Work Day, but last year we did Bike to Work Happy Hour at the Redstone Pub. And so this year we're combining our Bike to Work Happy Hour with our Silver Celebration because it's, it's going to be big. It, it's, we're very excited about it. So the whole town is invited because, again, we couldn't have done it without the support of the town and everybody in the town. So that's um, May 15th. That's a Friday. Um, and then we're, um, we're actually ending the, the, uh, the month with another ride with Lisa. We did it for the first time last year. It was a beginner's ride. So this year we're going to call it a beginner's refresher ride. And because that's May Lisa 20. is much more of a beginner well, than Mary Well, you know, she has been on the bicycle in a long time. And I tell people, once you get on it, it's like riding a bike. You know, you really, <laughs> right. you really sort of, you don't forget it. And I can't tell you how much fun she had. And she really had a blast, so she was really a good sport, so she decided that she would do it again this year. Mm -hmm. and, and if you want to know more about what we're doing and more about um, Bike Month, there are several places that you can go to. You can go to, um, actually, SCTV. We're going to have a lot of public service announcements. Uh, Deb has devised a lot of things, so a lot of that will be on um, SCTV. You can go to Sinsbury Free Bike Facebook page. Um, we also have our own website. We actually have our own domain, which is excited, and that's at, at www.sinsbury.bike. And you can also go to the town's website. So you have four very, very easy websites to go to to find out about all the events that we're doing. And we're very excited. And so this is what a bicycle-friendly community does. So you know, you, you the start, one thing you didn't, you didn't mention was the triathlon, which is on that May 18th or something, that Sunday Yes, is. it's May 17th. May 17th. And it is Bike Month, but actually we're not involved with that. That's, right. a, that's a different committee. But, but, you know, it has been huge, and we're very excited that they're doing it in May. So it is a, it's not part of our schedule, but it is important for the town, and, and it's very important what's happening. But um, actually... Uh, Patty Jacobus is on that committee, so there are other people on the committee. So it's it's not unimportant, but we're just not as involved with the planning and that. So that so, was a genius idea, by the way. I think. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great idea. Yeah. And it brought a lot of people to yeah. town. It was yes. very successful. Yeah. So we have just a little while left. I want I, I, I want to give you a chance to talk about what we didn't get a chance to talk about. I know you wanted to talk about safety equipment, lights, bells, mm. bright clothing. Maybe, uh, Debbie, you want to start with that a little bit? Sure. Um, I, just a couple things to help cyclists um, be safe on the roads, um, be seen, be aware, and be predictable. And that's an expression we use with our with the kids in the schools. Mm -hmm. Be seen, wear something bright. And um, actually, the neon colors are very popular for the children these days. But um, it makes such a difference and you see so many cyclists wearing black mm -hmm. and I say to myself why are they dressing like the pavement where you know wear something like this and it really does help motorists see you especially at dusk or in the morning absolutely but even any time right. of day it makes a difference and walking too you know this right. is for, this is for right. walkers walking. as well right right, right. Um, obviously we um, encourage cyclists to wear helmets so uh, very important we encourage cyclists to signal when passing on the rail trail. So our rail trail is so popular with cyclists as well as pedestrians. If you're going to go around, pass a pedestrian, you go around to the left, call out to them or use a bell to um, signal that you are, if we make that ring, signal that they're passing. 
Um, if a cyclist is riding at dusk or at night, they need to legally have lights on their bike. So a red, uh, red light is required for the rear of the bike, and some people use them during daylight and they'll have them blink. Mm -hmm. And a white light, which I don't have today, is um, required for the front of the bike. And um, this is something that is not required, but I bring it up as a parent. I love having a mirror on my bike, even riding on the rail trail. If I'm in the back of my group, my family's ahead of me, my young children who are not necessarily totally predictable, if I have a mirror, I can see behind me on the rail trail and see when a faster cyclist is coming up. And then I yell to my children, cyclist coming, you know, move right. Um, obviously on the road, it also helps. Um, when I started riding on busier roads, it was really nice to have a mirror where I can have a feel for what's coming up behind me. Um, this is something that's reflective and bright that we've been giving out as part of our Safe Routes to School program. I like them, they're slap bracelets actually, but you know what, I just throw it on my bike, it's just one more bright thing. So, um, I don't know, can you think of any other equipment that... No, I think that covers it. I, I would say though too that some people are putting the lights on the helmet as well because you, it, you can see it better. But the key is, like Deb said, is to wear bright clothing, whether you're cycling or whether you're walking, especially at dusk, because you really can't see it. And the other thing, too, is walk and ride on the proper side of the road. If you're cycling, you should be moving with the traffic, so you should be on the right. If you're walking, you should be walking facing the traffic. And it really makes me nervous because I see a lot of people walking on the wrong side of the road or a lot of people cycling on the wrong side of the road. Mm -hmm. So I think those are key. It's wear bright clothing and uh, walk on the right side of the road. And all the reflective stuff is really... Bike uh, on the right side of the road. Mm -hmm. um, yes, <laughs> Right, thank left, you. right. So um, uh, yeah. with the pedestrian, um, we have one minute left. The Pedestrian Advisory Committee can people um, complain to you or get advice from you or can they pick up the, send an email or something? Well, we hope they don't complain too much, <laughs> but, um, but we're, we're there to educate them. And, and I, I do wanna just make a plug for this real quick. We could really use some volunteers. You know, um, we're, we're a skeleton crew. People really don't realize how much we do. Uh, with a few people that we have. And a lot of it isn't a lot of work. Sometimes we just need, um, you know, an extra a pair of hands. We could use some work, some help probably for bike to work day. So we could use some volunteers, but <clears throat> we want to continue to build a bicycle friendly community. We need to reapply in 40 years. So that's really important. And so we want people to help us and educating, I think is really key. It is absolutely key is educating people. And we need people to help us do that. Well, you know, our time is up. This went really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks uh, to everyone here uh, behind the scenes for getting the show in the air. Thanks especially to my guest, Diana Moody. Thank you. Laura Rosado and Debbie Thibodeau. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, thank you for joining us. If you missed any portion of the show, you can find it on our website at SinsberryTV.org. I'm Dominique Avery. See you next time for the Talk of Simsbury. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. <laughs>